you've spoken with uh, with Don Hoffman a few times. Yes. Uh, in his book, Case many Against more Reality. Than a few. Yeah. Many more than a few. There's a lot of fun ones. Was there one with Sam was involved? Well, Sam and I interviewed him. Yeah, sorry. Most of the conversations I've had with him are private. They're not right. public. But yeah. we used to meet before the pandemic. We were meeting about monthly to discuss ideas. I would love to be a fly in the wall of those discussions. But he wrote a book, Case Against Reality. Yeah. Makes the case that our perception is completely detached from objective reality. Can you explain his perspective and oh, no. let us know. Well, no, 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 maybe not fully, but to which degree you yeah. agree and don't. So this is much more focused. I guess you guys have an agreement that consciousness is somehow fundamental. Yeah, I mean, I think we both think we might be wrong. Um, about the consciousness or about reality? About it being fundamental. Right. I think we're right. both just, we both agree that this is a legitimate um question to ask at this point in science, is consciousness fundamental? And I, I really see it as a question, and I think he does too. But he goes hard on reality. Yes. So and how, it's hard interesting you because reality? I, you know, especially, so I actually now have recorded three conversations with him for this project I'm working on. Yeah. And in every conversation we have, we seem to land on the same place, but this last conversation we had, it, it seemed to be even more clear that the semantics really get in the way. When you get into the weeds in these conversations, we it's almost like we need some new terminology because it's hard to know sometimes whether we're talking about the same thing. Um, I have issues with his terminology that when we talk about what his terminology represents, it seems like we completely agree. Mm -hmm. But the conclusions you don't? It's possible we have a very similar view of the universe if consciousness is fundamental. It may be an identical view. It's hard for me to know because I disagree with a lot of his terminology. Okay, but our four-dimensional reality, he says that's like a complete construct, space-time is a complete weird construction that- Yeah, well, that I mean, the truth is that, I mean, if you talk to a neuroscientist like Anil Seth and- I would say most neuroscientists, but he's he's really good on this subject. And and his um, expertise and his area of focus is in perception. So he talks a lot about how our perceptions give us an experience of the world. And he calls it a controlled hallucination. Um, I'm sorry, he probably got, I think he says that he got that term from someone else. But that, that's, the, that's the term he uses. We got every term from somewhere <laughs> right, else. Right, that's true. Everything, there's no new ideas. All right. There's a sense in which what Hoffman is saying is already, we already know to be the case. So our brains are creating this conscious experience mm -hmm. um, based on these interactions with the outside world. It is in some sense all a controlled hallucination. And someone like Anil Seth, so from the neuro neuroscientific point of view, I actually have a quote here somewhere if you, if you have any interest in, in hearing the quote. Um, but he, he's essentially saying, Everything we experience as a perception, including our experience of time and space. So we still don't really know what our experience of space represents out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when you talk to physicists about the different interpretations of quantum mechanics, I mean, where physics is, is seems to be headed across the board at this point is that space and time are emergent. Um, that they're not par part of the fundamental fabric of reality. And so there's some ways in which Don is saying things that... Is he being too poetic about it? <laughs> is that is that the right way to, to phrase it? Because like... No, uh, go ahead. He, he says like, it's not that our perception is a con just a controlled hallucination. Well... No, it's not. He's saying something more than that. That's, more than that's that. True. I mean... Yes. It, but my point is that a lot of what he's already saying, on some level, we kind of, science is already there and could agree with. Yeah, but not all the way. Yeah. Because he's saying, like, well, he, that so he, we don't even, we've, like, ev ev the evolutionary process yeah. has constructed our brain mechanisms in such a way that we're really far from having access to 
objective reality. Yes. Although I think we already know that as well. I mean, if any version of string theory is correct, and you know, of course, we don't know yet. It's all up for grabs. But the truth is, each theory is more weirder than the last. Um, if there are fifteen dimensions of space, we are just not. We're not yes, wired, but to like, be able to understand the fundamental reality. I but but I think we have a consistent abstraction that seems to be reliable. Yeah, like a like a blockchain. Yes, and he's not just saying that we really only have this tiny window onto reality. He's saying that that window onto reality is giving us a lot of false information. Yeah, it's, it's not false. true. Not it's yeah. not just an abstraction. It's yeah. false. Yeah, because he's saying. There's no reason it needs to be true. Like yeah. there's no, uh, it does. It's not required to be true. Yeah. And in fact, there's through natural selection, it's very possible to uh, imagine, or it's likely to imagine that organisms will, will evolve in such a way that you're going to just be lying to yourself completely. And yeah. but the question there is if that's the case it's a really interesting thing to think about i think yeah, yeah. the rigor with which he approaches it is really um admirable i mean i, I do think yeah. it's scientific uh yeah. but <laughs> it's uh the question for me is why is it so consistent across all of these organisms we all seem to see the table like yes. and feel and so run what, into the So table. what he will agree. So what I would say to that, and when I've posed this to him, I really don't want to speak for him, <laughs> but I'll I'll answer it myself and say that I I believe he agrees with what I'm about to say, which is that the things we perceive are connected to the structure of reality. It's just that the structure of reality is made of something completely different than the thing we're experiencing. So imagine if you just go with the, the holographic principle, um, you know, loosely, uh, and actually it's, the holographic principle applies to black holes only. Um, so there's ADS CFT duality, anti Sitter space and conformal field theory. Am I getting all these terms right? The terms are I right, feel, I but I, I can't believe we're going there. Well, I mean, this is where I've gone in all of my conversations <laughs> with physicists because the idea is so. So if we just if we just have the basic principle that reality and all of the information can be contained or is is actually in a two dimensional space that gets projected. This is something that you don't buy based on the look on your face. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm actually freaking out because yes, any theory of modern physics gives inkling that reality is very weird. Right. And so completely different from how we experience that's it. That's one example. Which is so so this is an intuition that for whatever reason has has always felt true to me. This is this is the way I thought about things as a child. I've met other people that felt this way when I've had experiences in psychedelics. And this is where I start to sound crazy too. But <laughs> nope. But um everybody else is crazy. <laughs> except us. But that has always seemed right to me. And that's always the thing that I feel like I'm looking for. That it's funny, recently I was thinking that it's it's as if I feel like I'm I, and and this is more how I was thinking of how I felt as a child, but um, I, I feel this way a lot as an adult too. That the uh, the image is one of a snow globe that I that I that I'm confined to this snow globe based on my human perceptions, and the truth of reality is is out there, and it's actually why I'm so drawn to shaking intuitions. I feel like every time we shake up an intuition, it's like an opportunity to leave the snow globe for for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like smashing the marbles and seeing, oh, it's not liquid in there like I thought. It's 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 getting this glimpse of something truer than what we typically experience. I feel like it's so it's for a long time going to be snow globes inside snow globes yeah. inside snow globes. But the larger point is that, yes, whatever is true about the fundamental nature of reality is not something we're experiencing. However, it is linked and give us gives us clues to it. So so one image I've been I came up with recently, um, I actually wrote about this. I have an article in Nautilus about time um, because I was as I spend time thinking about what it would mean for consciousness to be fundamental. Um, and at the same time, I'm, I'm talking to physicists about different interpretations of quantum mechanics and the f and and the fact that the ones I'm talking to believe that space and time are are emergent and are not part of the fundamental story. Um I was thinking about what is it 
what could time be if it's not the way we experience it? What could it be pointing to? Um, and, you know, I'm not the first person to think like this. Many people have, have um, you know, developed different thought experiments around this. But, um, and this is, I'm not saying this is the way things are, but this is just one solution is that time and causality um, appear to us the way they do because for whatever reason, we're only perceiving one moment at a time. And these connections between events that we perceive as time are actually just part of the fabric of reality. There's some structure to reality at a deeper level um, where, you know, it's like shining a flashlight on the structure of reality where for us, for whatever reason, everything else disappears. And the only thing that exists is, is that single pin pinprick of light that we happen to be inhabiting or that we can perceive, but that the rest of it is there. And so that even though time would be an illusion and, and the causality in the way we experience it, it is an illusion, um, or it doesn't mean what we think it means, it's still pointing to a deeper structure. There's something that it corresponds to in the fundamental nature of reality. And I've had many enough conversations with Don, I think, to know that he, he would agree with that, that our perceptions map onto something. It's just not the experience of it that we're having. So so to go back to um, in, uh, the idea that all of reality could be um, contained in two dimensions and there's something about the, the interaction between different points um, that cause this holograph mm -hmm. so that it seems like there's a three-dimensional world when in fact that it's, it's a projection of this two-dimensional surface. Um, what we experience as space still references something at the fundamental level. It's just that it's not space. And that is something that makes a lot of sense to me. I also, I posted an excerpt. George Musser wrote a great book, Spooky Action at a Distance. Mm -hmm. Spooky Action at a Distance. Um, and he talks about, he's, he's a great science writer, and he talks about ways to kind of absorb what this would mean, this ADS-CFT duality. And he talks about, he gives an example of um, music as an analogy, that two different notes can exist in three dimensions as if the other doesn't exist because mm -hmm. of the frequency of the, the sound waves. And that in another way, you can think of the sound waves existing in different dimensions. I don't know if that's I. I, 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 I yeah, that's really interesting. So <laughs> I don't so, speak as well as I write. So <laughs> you speak I've, written, I've written about this in a way that I think is is easier to absorb than the way I just described it. But, but I think ca causality is a trickier, trickiest one. Trickier yes. one. Time, Time is a tricky one yeah. to like. Yeah. Oh boy! And this... there are physicists who think that space is emergent, but time is still fundamental. And Lee Smolin is one of those scientists. And. It's yeah. really interesting to talk to him about this, but yeah. So. But time being emergent uh, is a really trippy one to think about. Yes. Also, I I wonder if it's possible at which point does the experience of time start becoming a part of the conscious experience of living organisms? So is it something that yeah. evolved on Earth? Yeah. Only well, it's, or is it's it? It's also very hard to think about consciousness without time, and that's something right. that's really interesting for me to think about too. Um, although, not that this is scientific evidence of anything, but I and many others have had the experience—a timeless, spaceless experience—in um, certain states of meditation and on under the influence and that's of a still a conscious experience. Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. But didn't you say that some aspect of conscious experience is memory? It seems like that too. No, no. So I, I said a, an experience of being a self is due to ah. memory. Um, it seems that consciousness and time are inextricably linked, but I, I think that may be an illusion also. And when I think about consciousness being fundamental and, you know, someone, oops, 
someone like Max Tegmark, I don't know who, if there are other mathematicians, I'm sure there are, he's the only one I know of who will talk about mathematical forms and shapes as not just being, he talks about them as being actual objects in nature that that exist, that are not just mathematical structures that we can think about, um, but any mathematical structure that comes out of the math actually exists in reality. Yeah. And so when I think about consciousness being fundamental, I think about physics and mathematics being a description of the structure of it. And that when mathematicians say things like that, or physicists say things like that, um, it makes sense if we're talking about a conscious experience of some sort. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, oh, first of all, Max is great. Uh, it's, yeah. Man, this is really interesting to think about like how, what is fundamental. Yeah. It's a good exercise to do in general. Yeah. Like to, to, yeah. to really think through it. Yeah. I mean, ultimately it's a very humbling process because yes. we're probably in the very yeah. early days of, uh, yeah. well, we can't, no, currently, right? Right, currently. May, I mean, maybe permanently, but I, I remain optimistic. 